The main topic of today's class is periodic trends. Periodic trends is the change in an element's size or its energy compared to an element next to it in the periodic table. And we will understand periodic trends using the extended Bohr model. In the extended Bohr model, Z effective has replaced Z and uh, for both total energy and also size. Size, the proportionality constant, the R is A0 divided by N squared now over Z effective. And we will see how the extended Bohr model will get us periodic trends. Let's look at a first example. Uh, let's say we, uh, we want to compare lithium to beryllium and or and uh, beryllium to boron. So lithium going to beryllium going to boron. And while last time we were concerned with the difference of a Z effective of 2S and 2P, this time let's just concentrate on the change in the overall absolute value of Z effective of 2S. And you can see for the Z effective for 2S, and I just use 2S as a, this is the first count. We have a 1.3 here, or one, I'm going to just 1.26, 1.71, and a 2.12. And approximately, approximately the shift is that it increases by around plus 0.5. So approximate, this is approximate. The approximate change in Z effective 2S is a 0.5 increase as we go to each sequential element in the second shell. And since our goal here is just to get an approximate answer and not a detailed quantitative answer, we're not going to have to look at the D function. We can just look at the shell picture itself. And uh, let's do that over here. I'll put lithium, lithium here. It's 1S. 2, 2s1. Compare that to beryllium, which I'll put in a different color. Beryllium will be 1s2, 2s2. And all we're trying to get is this approximate shift of this increase of a half. And so Instead of using the D function, we'll use a more crude model, a less accurate model of the electrons, which is just the shell picture itself. So here is lithium with our plus three, uh, three protons in the center. And then we've got the two electrons, the two 1s electrons in the first shell. And then we have the 2s electron in the second shell. And uh, if we're just going to get an approximate z effective, then we can do it in this way. z effective for, for, uh, for <clears throat> uh, lithium, 2s, is going to be z minus s. And that's going to be 3. And the 2s, the 1s electrons in our crude picture are entirely inside the 2s. They completely shield 3 minus 2. And we get an approximate value for Z effective of 1. Okay, and now let's compare that to what we get for. Oh. Uh, well, we get that for beryllium. And in beryllium's case, and I'll use now a different color. Here's beryllium. So beryllium, we've got four protons in the center. Uh, 
uh, the next element. Uh, and now we put the, in our first shell, this is beryllium. We again have the two 1s electrons. But now in the second shell, we have two 2s electrons. I'll call one, put one in red, and the other one I'll make uh, purple. And now we want to figure out what Z effective is for beryllium. So Z effective, and we're going to do beryllium, and we're going to do it for the 2s electron, the red 2s electron. And so that will be equal to 4, because that's the nuclear charge. The 1s electrons are still entirely inside. They shield completely. Minus 2. And now we get to the interesting thing. The 2s electron that's in purple. The 2s electron that's in purple uh, also could shield the 2s electron. And remember Gauss's law. Gauss's law for spherical distributions is if the char charge is inside and spherically symmetric, it's as if it's at the nucleus. If it's outside, it has no effect on the forces at all. So we need to figure out what percent of the time, what percent of the time is the purple, is the purple 2S inside the red 2S? That is the question. Why don't you think about it? We have two 2s electrons. They're basically uh, very similar. And what percent of the time is one of them closer to the nucleus than the other? And remember, they're in the same orbital, 2s. Put in chat if you can figure out an answer. Make a guess. Well, they're in the same orbital, so there's no difference between them. But one of them is at any one time closer to the nucleus than the other. So put in chat. They're in the same. They're, yeah, they have to be 50% of the time the red 2s electron is closer. And 50% of the time the purple 2s electron is closer. From the red viewpoint, the purple electron only counts according to Gauss's law when the purple electron is inside. So the purple electron screens for how much? Put it in chat. And the answer is a half. And you get then that the approximate beryllium Z effective is 1.5. Now we're not dealing here with super accurate numbers because we're just dealing with shell pictures and we're not dealing with D functions. But already we can see that the Z effective for beryllium is going to be half bigger than lithium. And this same argument is going to work as I add more electrons. Here, if I add, went on to the next element and I added uh, boron, uh, I would have a 2p electron, but the 2p electron is in the second shell, and I'd get the same story. And so you would end up with these approximate Z effectives. For lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine of one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. Oh, I can see that that's, I need to scroll it up. And here, I'll put it up here. And these are numbers that if you have seen, uh, uh, looked at a lot of periodic trends, you may recognize. These are the numbers that are the Pauling electronegativities for <coughs> the second shell. Pauling electronegativities are based on thermochemistry, but they're actually standardized to these uh, approximate Z effectives caused by this very simple shell model.